In this video, we'll go into the Horizon console and use the Add Farm wizard to create a farm of Microsoft Remote Desktop Services hosts. With this feature, you don't have to create and configure each RDSH server separately. This is the first part of creating Horizon published applications. Before you can create an instant clone farm, here's what you need. A Windows virtual machine that has a server operating system installed, along with VMware tools and the Horizon agent. When installing the Horizon agent, you need to select to install the instant clone component. This component is not selected by default as it is when you install Horizon agent on a Windows desktop machine. Also, that VM, which you'll use for the RDSH server golden image, must have the appropriate RDSH roles and services installed. See the product guide called Windows Desktops and Applications in Horizon 8 for instructions about preparing the server OS for use as an RDS host and for preparing the RDS host golden image. If there are specific applications that you want to turn into published applications, install those on the VM. This prerequisite is optional because for testing out published apps, you can just use some of the many apps that come already installed on the VM. After you finish creating that VM in vSphere, power it off and take a VM snapshot of it. You also need to have created an OU in Active Directory and an Instant Clone Domain Administrator, as described in an earlier video in the series. You might also want to make a VM folder in vCenter Server Inventory to organize the clones in one place. Okay, in the Horizon console, navigate to Inventory, Farms, and click Add. On the Type page, leave Automated Farm. Click Next. On this page, leave Instant Clone, make sure your vCenter server is selected, and click Next. For Storage Policy Management, leave the defaults and click Next. For the Farm ID, for the example in this video, I'll use HCN8-Servers. Scroll down. For display protocol, we'll use BLAST, which is the best one. But these other display protocols are also supported. We will, however, allow users to change the display protocol if they want. We'll leave the other default settings, but I'll show you what some of the possibilities are. For example, you can limit the number of sessions per host, and you can set things so that after a user disconnects, they either get immediately logged off or they get logged off after a certain amount of time after they disconnect. Click Next. Every field with an asterisk is required, but all of these fields already have defaults, so you don't need to enter anything unless you have some reason to change the default. For the naming pattern, I'll use hcn8-rdsh- and then each clone will have its own number added to that name. For the maximum number of machines, enter 10. And then for the minimum number of machines we want to keep available during maintenance operations, set that to 1. Click Next. OK, here's the fun part, vCenter server settings. For golden image in vCenter, click Browse and go find the VM you created as part of the prerequisites. And click Submit. Then go find the snapshot and click Submit. For Virtual Machine Folder Location, if you created a folder, click Browse and go find that. Click Submit. For the Resource Cluster, click Browse and select something. Click Submit. For Resource Pool, I'm selecting the same thing. For Instant Clone Data Stores, click Browse and select something. Click Submit. For network, we'll use the same network settings as are used for the golden image. And then we'll leave the defaults for CPU, RAM, and number of cores. Click Next, finally. For the domain, make sure the domain user you created as part of the prerequisites is selected. For AD container, click Browse and find the OU that you created as part of the prerequisites. Leave the rest of the defaults. We'll go ahead and use clone prep instead of sysprep, which is more convenient. Click Next. Scroll through all the settings you've configured. There are tons of them. They are described in the product documentation topic called Worksheet for Creating an Automated Instant Clone Farm in Horizon. 
The farm is added to the farms page. Click it to drill down to details. I'll refresh the summary page and scroll all the way down to the vCenter server section, and the secondary image area shows the publishing progress. If you keep refreshing the page, you'll be able to see the progress. After several minutes, the status changes to Published. Now the golden image field lists the path to the image that was published, and you can see the snapshot over here. You can scroll up and go to the RDS Host tab. It will show all 10 machines. If you scroll all the way to the right, you can see that they are enabled and available. Now that we have the farm, we can create app pools as described in the next video. For more Horizon technical resources, be sure to visit techzone.omnisa.com.